How about, instead of having separate male and female toilets, we have just one giant, grand unified toilet instead? It sounds mad, but bear with me. Right now, shops are open for everybody to access. Cinemas openly allow both sexes to mingle. So do parks, car parks, and public transport. I didn't see you get on. There might have been a time when this wasn't the case, but we've moved beyond all that. But for some reason, toilets remain an archaic, inefficient, and, if I'm honest, unnecessary form of segregation. Bear with me here. Now I understand why you'd want privacy while you're doing your business. That's why cubicles were invented. What goes on inside a cubicle stays inside that cubicle. As a sworn member of the Cubicle Brothers, I understand that better than most. That's why cubicles have walls and a lockable door. What I don't understand is why you need to then put these cubicles inside separate rooms. If a cubicle design doesn't offer enough privacy, then it's the cubicle that needs redesigning. Meanwhile, inside only male toilets is the urinal, and the urinal is a fantastic invention. Human anatomy prevents this device from being used by men and women equally. But since men can use these things, it makes sense to have them in the toilet, since they save a hell of a lot of time and effort when compared with using a cubicle. The wonderful benefits of the urinal are clear for all to see, because when the place gets busy, it's always, without fail, the women's toilet that gets the longer queue. Don't get me wrong, there is a smug satisfaction I get from walking past a long row of queuing women and straight into the men's. It's like I'm in the priority queue or something. But that smug satisfaction is replaced with sadness as I enter the men's and discover so many unused cubicles. What a waste of time and space. It simply makes no sense for women to all be queuing for one room when their needs could be so easily met by the excess in the other. Hence the need for a grand unified toilet. So what would such a place be like? What would this future utopia, this heaven on earth pipe dream look like? Well, kind of like your average public toilet, but with fewer walls and with less queuing. Here is a prototype using the same resources, the same number of cubicles, same number of sinks and urinals, just to show that it is possible within the same space. I've added an extra divider for the urinals just in case there are guys out there who feel that men deserve extra privacy in these unified toilets. And then here's a urinal for the man who does not situated extra close to the doorway for maximum efficiency. For the man with no time or dignity to lose. And a toilet on the other side, in the name of equality. You'll notice something else too. No doors. Because who thought they were ever a good idea? So let's talk you through the ordeal. You use the urinal, I think we can all agree on that. Then you wash your hands. Although, I'm not sure all of us agree on that. But we can all agree that we don't bother drying our hands, because who has time for that? But then you get to the door of the toilet, and in order to leave, must grab hold of the world's dirtiest object. That being the toilet room door handle. And it's always a pull handle for some sick reason. I don't dare touch these things. What I do instead is to hang around the entrance of the men's toilets waiting for somebody else to enter, or to make a mad dash when somebody else is leaving. Neither is ideal. So I first considered foot handles to help you to open the door without needing to touch them. But better still would be swing doors, so that you could just kick them open whether you were entering or leaving. This would be a bit of stress relief as you leave the place, and a touch of excitement. Not knowing if somebody's on the other side of it, and about to kick this thing really hard into your face. And then it struck me. N not the door. The solution. Why even have a door? This is a unified toilet. Everybody's welcome here. So in the name of inclusion, for disabled access and for improved safety, I have done away with doors completely. I've even extended the width of the entrance to make these toilets serve almost like an extension of a public place. Great lighting, great visibility, with only the private places kept out of sight. Ideal. Dot a few benches around, a vending machine and children's play equipment, and your local toilet could double as a day out. But the unified toilet is primarily about efficiency gains, and it will need to get the number of urinals and cubicles just right. I call this balance the golden ratio, and it will take smarter people than myself to figure that out. Mathematicians, researchers, scientists, Dr. Ron Cutler. People to carefully assess the number of people using the cubicles and the average duration of their visit. This research is essential and not to be half assed It's just a shame a urinal doesn't exist that could be used by everyone and for everything, because they really are that great. Ladies might not know this, but every man knows the golden urinal rules, being that you do not use a urinal that's next to one that's already in use. Nor would you occupy this one in this situation, as it means there are no acceptable urinals for the person queuing behind you to use. You should instead use this one, or this one, which allows the person behind you to also begin their grand toilet experience. This is terrible. This is even worse. 
If you noticed that men were better at socially distancing during the pandemic, that's no coincidence. And all those years of practicing urinal etiquette paid off when they were finally applied to social distancing beyond the confines of toilet life. How about that? The golden urinal rules may actually have saved lives. However, while being used within their native toilet setting, these rules present a problem, namely being that half of these things are left unused. Conventional wisdom would say that they should be more spaced out and with dividers between them, yet men will still leave a urinal gap between themselves and others. So I propose the opposite. We need to bring the urinals closer together, stagger them if needs be. And if you continue this trend for long enough, then you're left with something the guys are already familiar with, and that's the urinal trough. A superb design and a scalable solution that doesn't really have a maximum throughput, because as the demand goes up and as people get increasingly desperate, so does the supply this offers. What if this space-saving device could go even further? How small a space can we cram the urinal into? I proudly present the communal urinal. The communal for short, where every man is equal. I devised a number of these concepts with the goal being maximum efficiency. Simply have a platform around the outside for people to stand on and a hole in the middle for them to piss into. I particularly like this spiral design, which would enable as many floors of pissing platforms as required very efficient, and excellent on hot summer days, since people on the lower levels are kept cool with refreshing spray. I call this phenomenon the Golden Shower. It would be a grave mistake to dismiss this video as being a load of crap, to think that I'm taking the piss, or that it's all just toilet humour, for I believe there is a good idea behind the unified toilet that I speak of. Like having open tournaments in sports, or family-sized packs of crisps, it just makes sense to have a one-size-fits-all approach to toilets as well. To do away with the classifications and segregations, and to transform toilets into the most efficient use of the available space as humanly possible. I can't claim to have come up with the theory. That honour goes to the master. But here I am, passing it on to you. And like a virulent disease, I hope you find yourself now contagiously infected with the notion of a unified toilet. If you are, then get out there, hang around some toilets and spread this dream to others so that one day we'll all finally be able to stand together in united world peace.